Wasting money on cures Forgot how to fix myself They say that time is free Then why is it so precious? Oh, I'll say Good afternoon, everyone. It's Jim here. Welcome on this uh, bank holiday Monday afternoon to uh, a live A-level business live stream. And I'm joined by my old mucker, Graham. Good afternoon, G. Afternoon, Jim. Are you okay? Very good, mate. Yeah, it's, um, it's what, two, two and a bit weeks to go, isn't it, until uh, the first A-level business exam. So I thought we'd kick off our live stream program. I know we've uh, still got another couple of dates to go, but I thought we'd kick it off with some quant skills for half an hour. So I think we'll have some fun and frolics, um, to use the word loosely. Hmm. Are you all set for the mate? Actually, just whilst we're getting ready, lots of people joining us. I think we've almost got 100 people live at the minute, which is fantastic. Just a quick reminder, uh, <laughs> put Graham's uh, face on the screen there. I'll give you a wave. Uh, we've still got two dates left on our Grade Booster Tour. I know Jacob and one or two others are joining us at St Stratford on uh, Thursday. So if you're an AQA student, uh, next Wednesday or what's that? A week? A week? Well, no, a day after tomorrow, uh, 3rd of May, uh, AQA, our last AQA level business, um, Grey Booster at Westfield White City, and then the day after at uh, Stratford City. We'll stick a link to those in the comments below when we get going. Uh, this live stream is for all exam boards. We've picked concepts, topics, quantitative skills, numerical skills from all the exam boards. So hopefully useful if you're doing an Excel, AQA, OCR, or whatever. Gee, should we make a start whilst everyone's joining us? Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, just pick on one thing in the uh, in the chat window. It is yep. Stratford, London. Uh, that, it that's is. Where we are. Yes. Yeah. Not Stratford Shakespeare. Stratford City. Yeah. I used to have a Shakespeare pencil, but I lost it. You know, I can't remember whether it was a two B or not two B. Uh huh. With that in mind, uh, Graham, shall, shall, we, I, uh, shall, shall we? Shall I do the big reveal, or do you want to go through this one? Um, I'll do it. I'll okay. do it. Uh, so, uh, so. 
Name the product, uh, five clues. So this product was created in 1912 and was initially used by the British Army. So if you think of, a, if you're thinking, you know what, I know a product created in 1912 that was used by the British Army. Let us know what that product is. Um, I can think of one that was launched in 1911. A... Uh, so it's not that one, is it? Can't oh, be. It's not that one. No, 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 no. So let's look at clue number two. Uh, this iconic product is still made in the UK, Poland, and the US. It's not a watch, um, and it's not dairy milk. It's not Ford Lucy either. Should we look at clue number three? Celebrity customers, um, I use the word celebrity loosely, include the <laughs> Princess of Wales and Meghan Markle. Um, Jack Mitchell's there uh, coming um, with Marmite. If you're an Excel student, you might get an extract on Marmite. Um, Let's have a look at clue number this is hard, four. This is hard, isn't it? Lots of it's great answers. Very, very, through. very spam, which of course yeah, was invented of... around around that time, wasn't it? Oh, okay. So unsold stock used to be burned, but this was stopped in 2018. Perhaps, um, a, a, perhaps would... as a way of keeping the price high, I guess, isn't it? To stop the stuff from getting yeah, entering would... the market. I would check those clues very carefully. That was another ah. clue there. I would check those clues yeah. very carefully. I think See what I've done there. Uh, I think um, Jacob has got it. Let's look at clue number five. And Isabel as well. Yep. And Isabel, yeah. Uh, typical selling price is around £1,500, depending on design and fabric. And it is indeed, let's reveal it, it is, it's Burberry. And we've given you a specific product because the trench coat was specifically used by the British Army. Manufactured so there not we go. a million miles away from here, actually, just around the corner, about 10 miles away from the Chiefsky office. Uh, but I've never had one. Wow. Never had one. I can't afford one, Graham. Can you? Um, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Should we move on to the questions? You take, Let's do so, these alternately. Um, you, get, you go first, then, mate. You do the first one, then. Okay, so income elasticity of demand. So product A has an income elasticity of demand, also known as YED, coefficient of plus 0 0.75. If incomes increase by 2% next year, what is the likely change in quantity demanded of product A? So is it A, B, C, or D? Please type your answer into the chat window. So if you think quantity demanded will fall by 15%, Type in air in the chat window. Um, so lots of lots of uh, lots of comments about my clothing attire on tour. So, um, but let's focus on the uh, on the questions. So, um, lots going for B, um, which is quantity demanded will increase by one and a half percent. Let's have a few um, more seconds. Um, now that's interesting because there's, there's a comment there, but it is an inferior good. Now we need to be really careful with uh, the difference between price elasticity of demand and income elasticity of demand. Remember, the plus signifies something. Dwarf plays playing it safe with B or D. Um, it's definitely A, B, C or D. Should we find out the right answer? It is B. So what that's telling us is for every, so that plus 0.75 is basically telling us for every 1% income, increase in income, the quantity demanded will increase by 0.75%. So we simply multiply the 2% by the 0.75, which tells us if incomes do rise by 2%, the quantity demanded will increase by 1.5%. If that was a minus in front of that, then that would be an inferior good, which would tell us that if incomes increased, the quantity demanded would fall. So inferior goods, you might think of something, you know, own brand soup in a supermarket, for example. The more people earn, they may switch to branded goods. Therefore, the quantity demanded may fall. Um, well done, everyone who got that. So there was some workings out in the chat window. Remember, um, if you're an Excel student, there's no MCQs. But if you get any calculation question that's not an MCQ, if you're an AQA student, remember, we've been talking about this a lot, haven't we, Jim, in, the, in our workshops? Formula, process, final answer. And if you don't know the formula, just write a definition down, and then yeah. chances are you're going to get some marks for knowledge. So never leave anything blank. Never. Okay, here's our second uh, multiple choice question. And it's another calculation. They're not all counts, but today we are focusing on quantitative skills. So quite a few are. So the variable cost per unit of product B is a quarter 
of its selling price of eight pounds per unit. So we're using fractions here. So what's the break-even output if fixed costs are twenty-four thousand pounds? And we've got four options there on the screen: A, B, C, and D. Remember uh, the break-even output. Hopefully, you do, which is. Uh, Fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. That would help you work this one out. There's a couple of stages in this calculation. So I'll give you another 10 to 15 seconds. Rakiba, Nash, and Foxfly are very quickly into the um, into the live chat. In this case, you only need to put either A, B, C, or D. But if you wish, you can put down the, the actual answer. A few more seconds. Most people, Talia, Mike, uh, Lorna, uh, who else? Jacob's going. Uh, Jacob's joining us on Thursday. Looking forward to meeting you. Jacob's going C as well. Let's have a look at the answer. It is indeed 4,000 units. Yeah, so uh, fractions. Um, Graham will be able to confirm this, but I'm not sure fractions. It is a, it is a, an examinable skill, but I don't think it's been examined by either board uh, so far. But uh, a quarter is 25%. Therefore, contribution per unit must be 75% of £8. So that's £6 per unit. Then we just divide fixed costs. £24,000 by £6 per unit. And don't forget, we express break-even output in terms of units. So A and B couldn't be right because they're expressed in terms of uh, currency. And do, you, do you want anything to that one, G, but, or should we move on to the next one? Yeah, so fractions are quantitative skill one, ratios, average and fractions. I've never seen uh, anything, even an, uh, an appendices that uh, touches on fractions. So as long as we're prepared for that, yeah. if you'd put four thousand pound down, um, you'd uh, you know you'd lose a mark for that. Um, so be really careful in specific units, percentages, and things like that. Okay. So managers in a business have based their budgeted sales for next year by assuming that the percentage sales growth trend of recent years will continue. What technique are they using to estimate sales? Is it correlation? extrapolation variance analysis or cash flow forecasting so they've based their budgeted sales for next year by assuming that the percentage sales growth trend of recent years will continue which technique are they using to estimate sales is a correlation extrapolation variance analysis cash flow forecasting what do we think a b c or d So lots of answers coming in to the chat window now. So the majority, so we're split between B and D. So I'm seeing some Bs and some Ds. So um, Zoe there, B saying extrapolation. Should we reveal the answer? There it is. It is, of course, extrapolation. Now, AQA students, um, if my memory serves me right, this was examined recently. It was a definition question, two marks. What is meant by the term extrapolation? A lot of students got confused between extrapolation and correlation. And extrapolation, Archie, yeah, it is. Because what you have to be familiar with is uh, quantitative sales forecasting, three, three point or four quarter moving averages, extrapolation and scatter graphs. So um, just be familiar with the concept. So for Archie there, it would come under merely moving averages where moving averages where you find the underlying trend and extrapolate that forward using a line of best fit. So uh, be familiar with that. So Charles is saying it did come up last year. Yeah, it did indeed. Okay. For AQA. Here's our fourth question. Oh, it's another calc. So Market C, where do we where do we come up with these names from? Market C had a size of sixteen million pounds last year, market size. And the market's expected to grow by five percent this year. So what will the market share of the leading product be this year if it achieves sales of 2.52 million? So this is market size, market growth, and market share all combined into one question, which if it was AQA, they'd be deliriously happy because they could tick all three off, couldn't they, on the specification. So we've got a market size of 16, point, 16 million, 16.0 million. It's going to grow by 5%. What is the market share of the leading product if it achieves sales of two? 0.52 million. What do we think? It's either A, 5%, B, 13%. Is it C, 12%, or D, 15%? A few more seconds. Lucy and Lorne and Jack and Isabel all going, and, and many others, all going for the same answer. So I'm hoping it's right. I'm pretty sure it is. Have a look. It is indeed, yeah, 15%, isn't it? 15%. So um, 16 million, if it goes up by 5%, turns into 16.8 million, I think. 
So if you divide 2.52 million, which is the sales of the product, divided by the higher market size of 16.8 million. Express, don't forget we express market share as a percentage. So in this case, 15%. Excellent. Over to you, Gene. Okay, so um, this is quite a tricky question, so read it carefully. Mm -hmm. Business D um, uh, achieved an operating profit margin this year of 12% on sales of 640,000. It expects sales to grow next year by 4%. If the operating margin stays the same, what will operating profit be next year? So it achieved an operating profit margin this year of 12%. Its sales were 640,000. It expects sales to grow next year by 4%. So if the operating profit margin stays at 12%, what will operating profit be next year? And you'll notice that we've done a lot of percentages here. And this is regularly flagged in examiner's reports as an area of weakness. So make sure you are comfortable and confident in calculating percentage increases and decreases. So a couple of seconds there, a couple of more seconds, A, B, C, or D. So um, I don't think an operating profit margin question has been examined for AQA or Edexcel um, because we we do one in our grid booster, don't we, in the workshop. So um, I don't think it's been examined. So doing absolutely superb here because that is a tough question. Is, and the majority yeah. are going for it is a tough question. It is a really tough question. So should we reveal the answer? It is a well done. So all we do is we multiply the 640,000 by 1.04 to get the growth in sales, which is 665,600. We find 12% of that, uh, which is 79,872. So well done, everyone. And we got some working out there as well, actually, in the yeah, chat window. Ash. A slightly different way of working it, but perfect. Well done. Yeah, yep. and obviously we, we, we formatted these questions as MCQs because that helps, in particular, helps AQA students uh, get used to calculating under a bit of time pressure. But of course, the basic principle of all of these questions is the same, isn't it? Uh, show your workings mm -hmm. and then hopefully you get the right answer. Uh, last one of these. So um, now you can do some calculations here or you should be able to work it out just by looking at the table. So the skill of interpreting data from a table or chart well, this table shows data related to sales and gross profit of uh, a business uh, in 2021 and 2022. And then it makes some statements, answers A, B, C, and D make some statements based on that data. So which one of those statements, only one, is true? Is it that sales revenue increased and gross profit margin increased? Or some other combination of sales revenue increasing or falling and gross profit margin increasing or falling? And actually, you can work it all out, but you could probably work it out just from looking at the data to be able to identify or isolate the answers that you think are correct. And I'll explain why that is when we've uh, given you a few more seconds. Although you lot are on fire today, as uh, to be honest with you, Graham, not unexpected, is it? Because we've seen so many talented, well-prepared students over the last few weeks and in particular on the live streams. Um, no surprise that most people are going for the right answer, which is... Uh, I'll just reveal a few more seconds. Kelly, uh, who, what have we got? Roxana, Jane, and Harry. I don't think we've given you a shout out so far. We just have now. All go for the right answer, which is indeed is B. Yeah, sales revenue has increased and gross profit margin fell. Well, let's just work out how you might have done that without doing all the calculations. I mean, you can do the calculations if you want to, but we can see, just look at the first two rows. Sales volume in units has gone up by 250 units and the selling price per unit has gone up. Well, if your volume's gone up and your selling price per unit's gone up, that must mean that sales revenue has also increased. Therefore, we know that A or B must be correct. However, we know that so sales has gone up, but we know that gross profit has fallen. So it must be the case. If gross profit has fallen and sales have gone up, then the margin, gross profit divided by sales revenue, has fallen. And actually, if you work it through, that's the case. But I think you could probably work it out, as maybe you all did. Uh, as Ash has pointed out here, um, it must be A or B, and gross profit margin must have fallen because gross profit has fallen in absolute terms. So well done. I think a lot of people got five out of five on those. We've got one bonus question. Do you want to do this one, G? One last MCQ. Okay, so which of these com which which of these combination of variables are most likely to have a strong negative correlation? So advertising costs and sales, 
employee job satisfaction and productivity, customer complaints and customer loyalty, brand loyalty and profit margins. So again, very quick off the mark here. Lots of so uh, answers flooding in to the. Gentleman. I'm reading negative correlation as being if one goes up, another one goes down. Is that right? That's the right. Isn't it? Rather than both go up. Or yeah. Both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And having knowing that yeah. now, I can now work out why everyone's going for the answer they are in the live chat. Go Good in question, opposite directions. One. Good question. Yeah. So the answer is indeed C. So if customer complaints go up, we would expect customer loyalty to fall. Whereas if customer complaints go down, we would expect customer loyalty to increase. Yeah, Ash, their positive correlation is both will move in the same direction. So advertising costs and sales, we would we would act, anticipate advertising costs. Uh, if you increase advertising, then sales may increase. Yeah, uh, now, just we talked a lot in the workshops about, about hedging words. Now, it's only a correlation. We can't say it will increase. So use words like may, perhaps, or if we increase the, uh, our advertising, that may lead to an increase in sales. We can't say it will. Um, it's only a correlation. So use hedging words like perhaps, could, may. Yeah. Much better use of language. Well done, everyone. What are, one of the issues with advertising, of course, is, as most marketeers know, is that half of all advertising is wasted. But the problem is you don't know which half. Uh, so that's always the challenge mm -hmm. for advertising and marketing. Right, now we've got four of these, haven't we? Just to finish off our last 10 minutes, we've got four, I would, what would you call them, Graham? Mini calculations, aren't they? We've called them calculation countdown. So we give give all our students a minute. Uh, and what we've done is we've picked out four different quantitative skills and four different areas. That still leaves a few more to do in the coming days and weeks. Uh, but the idea here is to have a go and uh, we'll give you a minute and then we'll go through the working, but also perhaps highlight the importance of of formula, process, and uh, answer. So here's the first one. That table shows index data relating to uh, the average selling price of used cars. So paper three for Red Excel students. This would be useful. Um, we're told that the index in 2018 was 100. Uh, 2022, the index was 141. So if the average used car price was 12,500 pounds in 2018, what was it in 2022? Let's give you a bit of time to work that one out. Put some music on. Graham enjoys this music. Disney music. I'm just going to get my uh, calculator out here. James, these questions are, are designed for all exam boards, so the quantitative and numerical skills and testing are, are appropriate to all exam boards. This will please Graham no end. The not just the answers, but which are coming in, but also the workings which are being shown in the live chat, which is fantastic. Um, so let's have a look at the answer. It is indeed seventeen thousand six hundred and twenty-five pounds, and a number of people, including uh, Graham in the live chat, have highlighted the importance, Graham, haven't they, of putting the pound sign as well as the uh, as well as the workings. Yeah, really important. Um, index numbers not uh, examined yet by Excel. It came up once uh, in an AQA paper linked to Hofstede. Um, but again, it's one of those quant skills that you should be familiar with. It's on. It's in the specification. It could be examined. Yeah. Now, I've just had a, a, somebody put their head around the door to say that he's about to test the fire alarm here for the next minute. So I'm going to mute myself, Graham. Do you want to do the next uh, the next activity? Okay, is that because these students are on fire, Jim? It is, is genuinely, one? it is that so, also. They are genuinely going to do the fire alarm, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's move on to the next one. So, calculation countdown two. So, the table shows data relating to production at a car factory. This year, the factory expects to make 2,000 more cars than last year. What will capacity utilization? I'll start again. What will capacity utilization be this year if there is no 
change in capacity. So we can see we've got the output of 20,000 last year and we've got capacity utilization of 80%. So can you work it out in the time allowed? Jim, can we start the Disney music, please? Jim's thrown a surprise tune in there. I've stuck in Time is Running Out music in the background, mate, just to, oh. just to mix things up a bit. Okay. It's the instrumental version, Graham. Ah, oh, the karaoke version. Don't forget, um, this is a percentage. So failure to put a percentage sign could result possibly in a mark being lost. Only one percentage sign needed. <laughs> Okay, so um, just remember, if you're an Edexcel student, remember your paper three is based on the car industry and the car industry currently is running on an average of 60% capacity utilization. So that's something um, that you maybe need to be familiar with. Shall we reveal the answer? It is 88%. So we can work out what the capacity was last year. So the output was 20,000. Capacity utilization was 80%. So we need to find out what 100% was because that's the capacity. So 20,000 cars divided by 0 0.8 times 100 is 25,000 uh, cars. So that's the capacity. Then uh, the output this year, we add 2,000 cars to that to give us 22,000 cars. 22,000 cars divided by 25,000 cars. Um, again, we would multiply that by 100 to give us 88%. Now, if you wrote 88 down, um, you know, you potentially could lose a mark for that because it's 88%. So you need to be very, very clear uh, with your answers. And when we've done our grade booster workshops, we've talked about these marks around the margins, these one or two marks that you can easily drop that could be the difference between a B grade to an A grade, a C grade to a B grade. So please make sure, you know, you put your percentage sign, your, your percentage signs down, your units if it's break even, your pound signs if it's needed. Make sure you don't drop any low hanging marks. So um Idiot percent. Well done. Should we move on to the next one, Jim? Two more to go. Shall I do this one? Yeah, you so, can do this uh, one. The, uh, we've got a, we're, we're, do, we're doing budgeting now and variance analysis, which was mentioned earlier, but this is actually a calculation. So that table shows, uh, what does it show? A sales variance and a cost variance uh, for a business this year. And we're told that the budgeted profit this year was £56,000. So what was the actual profit this year so we've got enough information to be able to calculate that so here's a minute with some disney music for you to have a go Quite a tricky question, as variance questions go. Don't forget the profit variance is the difference or the addition of the sales variance and the cost variance that gets you to the profit variance. Well, it's bad news for sales. Sales were £24,000 lower than expected. However, perhaps as a consequence of sales being lower, costs were £12,000 uh, lower than budget. So that was a favorable variance. That means that must have been a £12,000 adverse variance on profit. 
which means we still made a profit. And as lots of people in the live chat have pointed out, Joseph, for example, and Jacob and Jack uh, have pointed out that indeed that must mean we did make a profit, but it was £12,000 lower than uh, the budget. So there's our, now this is a bit of technique just on, on display there on the screen. If you had no idea how to work that one out, you could still get a mark. Don't leave it blank. Never leave a calculation blank. If you just wrote what, a, what, a, what actual profit is or what you think, um, how you might be able to work out the actual profit and the profit variance, that would show some knowledge and understanding to the examiners. Hopefully you might get a mark for that. Just showing the, showing your workings might get you two or three out of four, even if you don't get the correct answer. And it is, don't forget, it's, it's pounds, £44,000. Now, it's not minus because we did make a profit. It just happened to be £12,000 lower than budget. So don't put minus in front of it. Any more thoughts on that one? G, before we do the last one? Um, no, no, no. Just remember, if you get asked to work out a variance analysis or a variance, sorry, then uh, you, you remember to put adverse or variance or AOF. And as Jim said there, you know, um, don't put a minus down if it's adverse because, you know, a business can make a profit, but it can be an adverse variance as it is less than expected, which is bad news. And that's the way to remember variance, isn't it? Is it good news mm. or is it bad news? Good news, favourable, bad news, adverse. That's the way to remember should we do the last i think this is the last question isn't it Jim? it I is this, yeah uh, our last of our calculation is our last okay so um it's a gearing question which i think it's my i don't know about you jim i can't speak for you this is my favorite ratio so the uh, table second shows favorite ratio yeah second is favorite, it yeah. is it what would yeah. you be what is your favorite what's your favorite um, payables days Ah, okay, okay. Remember that's not on the Excel specification. Don't panic, Excel students. So the table shows financial data relating to a business this year. What was the gearing ratio of the business this year? So we've got the non-current liabilities, we've got cash, and we've got total equity. So can you work out from the information on screen the gearing ratio of the business? Jim, start the music, please. So Jim's on the ones and twos there, you know, changing the music again. Okay, so before we reveal the answer, it was, it's quite interesting there because there was one or two expressing the answer to one because seeing the word ratio. So if that was all you'd written down, the answer, then unfortunately you get no marks that. But if you'd shown your process and your workings out, um, you wouldn't get full marks, but you'd get the large proportion of the marks. So um, that is why it's so important to follow the format of formula or definition, if you don't know the formula, process, answer. So the answer is indeed it is it is 25%. Yeah. So if you put 0.25 to 1, because you've seen the word ratio, and you might be familiar with the current ratio or the asset test ratio, if you are an Edexcel student. So it is 25%. Now, this has been examined, giving has been examined lots of times. And the key thing that students keep getting wrong is not being able to work out capital employed. So it was really good to see that everyone so far what I typed into the chat window. Um, we could see you work out capital employed. Now, I just want to just, can I, may I throw in a bonus question, Jim? Yeah, do you right? throw in a go bonus it, yeah. question? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. So I'm gonna throw a bonus question in here. Can just, we type another chat window, a consequence of high gearing? Why might a business be concerned if its gearing is high? Um, and we would normally, uh, high gearing would be probably in excess of, of, of 50%. So if a business has high gearing, maybe it's, um, you know, increase its on-current liabilities. Why might it be a concern? Any ideas? Um, so we've got greater financial risk. We've got higher interest payments. So it is interesting because a lot of students, when they talk about the consequences of high gearing, talk about, well, if interest rates increase, then that could lead to an increase in 
interest repayments which is which which is of course it is true but it's also important to remember that most businesses when they do take finance out do you know take it on a fixed rate so therefore they're protected from increases in interest rates i think it's the increase in fixed costs that is possibly the biggest issue because remember fixed costs are fixed so they need to be paid even if the business's sales revenue falls down so increase in gearing also increases fixed costs which means that if sales revenues if sales revenue falls they still need to make those payments so lucy there's saying vulnerable to interest rate rises that that's a good use of language they are vulnerable if they do have uh borrowing on variable rates but uh the fixed cost angle as well is also crucial well done everyone so um really good answers there jim really good answers yeah awesome answers so there we go well we've done 30 minutes haven't we if you it's exactly 30 if you if you ignore the uh Name the iconic Bonus brand. Question. So uh, oh. the idea is we're going to, well, obviously we're going dashing off to uh, to do our final two Grey Booster events in London on Wednesday and Thursday. And then when we get back from really from next weekend and into, into next week, but then we're into live stream support before paper one for your chosen exam board, which of course is in what, two and a bit weeks time, isn't it? So uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get a notification as those dates and times are added. Graham, do you want to say a, a word about uh, the Instagram account? Yes, um, please, you know, if you want extra help and support, um, follow to your business Instagram. We are posting daily content, revision questions. We are doing, uh, Jim's doing lots of 60 minute business videos. We've recorded some longer videos, for example, 60 an seconds, investment Graham. appraisal. 60 seconds. Did, what did I say? Did I say 60, 60 minutes? minutes? This feels like I, 60 minutes. When oh, no, 60. Minutes. No, no, no. 60 seconds. Sorry, 60 seconds. Um, so please, uh, you know, follow us on Chit to You Business Instagram if you want any more help or support. And, uh, of course, you can catch up with this if you want to go through these questions again and download the PowerPoint if you go to tutoredyou.net forward slash live. And, uh, well, I think it's about 105 A-level business live stream recordings if, you, if you're stuck with nothing to watch. Mm. <laughs> Or revise maybe maybe there's one or two on there which might be useful for you and as i say please subscribe to the youtube channel and then you'll get a notification as we add in our regular live streams once the gray booster tour is finished graham it's great to see you mate enjoy the rest of your bank holiday uh anyone doing are economics? you watching the snooker gym i'll be watching the, snooker, watching the snooker after the after the economics live stream at five o'clock which i need to go get ready for uh, so uh, yeah i'll be okay. watching the snooker and um and then i'll catch you i'll see you in london on wednesday you will Don't do. be late. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone. Great to see everyone. And uh, well, we'll see you hopefully live in a few days' time. Cheers.